us and to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land that we gather on, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and I pay my respects to their elders past and present. I also pay my respects to the brave Syrian people and their army, and especially those who have lost their lives trying to defend their country against the most vile invaders that this world has seen. Yesterday, Australian planes started dropping bombs on Syria. Congratulations, we are now officially a rogue nation with no regard to the law that we so often preach. The airstrikes are 100% illegal and they are illegal for a reason. They have not been approved by the UN and there is a sovereign nation there that does not want us to bomb them, but we did anyway because America told us to. What leg does Australia now have to stand on when we condemn the violations of other countries? The irony is that this is happening at a time when people are talking about a refugee crisis and Tony Abbott wants to take in 12,000 Syrian refugees, as petty as that sounds, considering the sheer number of them. But if the world was shocked about a three-year-old being washed up on a beach, then they need to understand that him and the thousands that came with him were fleeing a war. So why are you making more war? Well, that's because Tony Abbott says that he needs to think with his heart and his head. Now, not that we can expect much from either, but was it his head or his heart? that made him and his allies support the death squads that tore my country apart. Yeah, the same yeah. ones that yeah. he claims he wants to fight right now. Yeah. Was it his head or his heart that made him an accomplice in the many false flag attacks where communities on whole were massacred just so it could be pinned on the other side and they could say that the Syrian government did it to gain support for regime change. Is it his head or a lack of heart that is making him take part in brutal economic sanctions against the Syrian people that have driven food and medicine prices up so high that most of the Syrian people now can't afford to eat properly or take care of their health. We have lived the worst five years of our lives under a brutal economic blockade while we are defending ourselves from terrorists that the West and their regional allies have sent into Syria. The sanctions against Syria don't affect the rich and they don't affect the government. They affect the poor and the most vulnerable, women and babies who need milk to drink. The millions that are still in Syria are suffering because of people like Tony Abbott. So please don't expect a medal of humanity from us when you take in 12,000 refugees. We don't want you to take in refugees. We want you to stop the war. We want you to stop supporting the terrorists that are fighting in Syria. We want you to stop the sanctions that are hurting the Syrian people. And to all refugee advocates and refugee groups, please don't think that this 12,000 intake is a victory for you. It is not a victory for you. There are thousands of refugees now locked up in Nauru and on Manus Island where five-year-olds are being sexually abused and young men men are bludgeoned to death. Why doesn't Tony Abbott let them go? Why doesn't he release them? Well, that's because he can't exploit them for his political crusades. They have to renounce their country. Well, that's sir. why they flee the rebels, not the government. That's why they the 12,000 refugee intake 
was just a distraction and to soften the news that we are going to war. Well, this is not a victory. Yeah. Yeah. Tony Abbott will take in 12,000 refugees and create millions more. Million. So if you really care for refugees, it's time to raise your voice and stand against the dirty war against Syria. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.